山卡拉 OK， 我现在我有冰淇淋。山卡拉 OK， 我现在我有冰淇淋。坚韧不拔的纪录片，在香港这座城市的冰淇淋。朋友们，今天的太阳真远。
Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bubloon aka Pabloon and boy am I excited for this video guys. This might be the most excited I've ever been for a Cruises of Blitz because Jinan is by far the most enjoyable tech tree ship I have played so far in this game. And that is not an overstatement, that is purely honest opinion here. I, I love this ship so much. And I hope that you enjoyed the montage. I hope you found it funny. And uh, yeah, let's let's get into the meat and potatoes of this ship. This is a stealthy, high damage dealing, completely crazy, squishy ship. You will get annihilated if you're not careful. But let's get into this. So the Jinan is a torpedo boat. It might look like, a, like an Austin, but trust me, this is not a gun focused ship. The torpedoes you have are 533 millimeters 20 in total 10 on each side and they are deep water torpedoes that go 10.40 kilometers you have 527 millimeters and that turret you see there is an aa turret it is not a real turret uh, for using it is purely aa but anyways the way i built the Jinan is pretty simple actually i put a little bit of focus in the guns hence why we took elite gun operator i don't say you should take aa spec never really i mean doesn't really make sense when you don't face a, a CV all the time. But this thing has Air Defense Alert 4, which boosts large caliber AA by 100%, and small cal caliber AA by 200%, which, I mean, this thing is comparable, even better, I would say, than Holland with its Air Defense going. It's not better than a Worcester, but it's really good. The Fuel Smoke 2, you have four uses of, and you have three uses of Torpedo Reload 2. Which, I mean, that's that's pretty crazy, um, just by standard. With mine, I have four, because I have the Legendary Commander. So, the camouflage you see here is pretty good. It gives surface detection, max traverse speed, and it, it it's generally a good camo. It's a historical camo, and I like the way it's just a simple gray camo. It kind of sticks to the, you know, the true color of a warship. I wanted to talk about the battle honors here, but just look at this. It's fire, it's flooding, and then it's just draw 90 ships. It's very, very easy to complete these battle honors, guys. Easy steal right there. Just go grab it, man. And uh, yeah, the equipment on Jinan, I actually went with dispersion mod because I do think you need to take dispersion. You don't use your guns all the time, but when you do, you want them to hit, and they are actually quite inaccurate. Along with that, they are 127 millimeters, but that do reload fast, so that's why I don't take reload mod. They reload in 3.4 seconds, which is great. I take steering because I'm a risky pal. I like take, taking, you know, dumb chances and going broadside. That's why I need steering to get all my torpedoes off. But if you're feeling a little more cautious, I would take prop mod. Of course, you gotta have concealment, guys. It's a no-brainer for a ship. If you don't take concealment, you're handicapping yourself a lot. Same with the supplies. Go for concealment. And for the commander, I have Sajin Bing, um, Bing Chiling. We got Underwater Protection Expert, Torpedo Alert Plus. I would take that too because you do get four defensive alerts. So, you know, you don't need more. You don't need five at least, trust me. I actually take high alert. Now, you could go for preheating. That's up to you. But I actually really like having high alert. I don't take artillery maintenance because you lose HP so fast. But high alert for me is good because I didn't get my damage con a little faster, so if my torpedo tubes get shot out and I use it, then it's a little closer. 
Air Defense Expert is also a no-brainer, even with a normal commander. Same with Exploit Weakness, the healing buff too. Because you don't have, you know, any firing skills, gun skills. You take Mistweaver Plus, and instead of taking Torpedo Reload Expert, which is a special skill, I would take Honor Seeker. Torpedo Reload, cooldown time, minus 25%, and plus 1, so you have 4 instead of 3. Which, I mean, you don't really need 4, to be honest. It's 3 is enough. I would take APCS if I didn't have this commander, but since I do have IFHE+, it's pretty funny. And of course, Giant Hunter is also a no-brainer. But yeah, I have some pretty cool gameplay lined up for you guys, so uh, yeah, let's check him out and have some fun. Okay, so here we are in a full squad game almost. We only got this CV on the enemy team who's not in the squad. And boys, lads, fellas, girls, ladies, this, this is just, I mean, I don't know how to express my excitement. This is a big damage game, both of the games I'm going to show you are, and of course, I'm sorry for the 10 minute montage, but like, I can't control myself. This is just, I love it too much. Alright, too, too much talk about how much I love this ship, let's actually talk about why I love this ship. So, the main reason I really like this ship is because it has some of the same qualities that a Minotaur has. First of all, the skill ceiling is pretty high on this ship. Um, if you are used to the Minotaur, you will feel right at home, and that's why I didn't really find it too hard in the beginning, but a lot of people who just got this out of the crate like I did, and yeah, we'll talk about that later, um, they they found it hard, and a lot of my subs has written to me and talked about how they find it difficult to play, and I think the reason that might some people might find this ship dif difficult is because they approach it thinking it's a gunboat. And I've said this a couple times now. This is not a gunboat. Because although the guns are great, like it's 127 millimeters you get. You get five of them, so that's 10 in total. That reload is, you can see, quite quick. And with the dispersion mod, they're very, very accurate. Not even bad. You can easily take out some DDs with that AP. But the problem with that is you have a fuel smoke. You do not have a normal smoke like a Minotaur or Smolensk. This fuel smoke saves you when you have to turn and use your torpedoes, that's why it's there. You do not use it as a, you know, sit still and farm damage, that's not what this is for, this is to get away, this is a get out of jail free card, and let's just see this AA, even the long range AA, look at this, we're taking out planes, you know, 4, 5, boom. No planes at tier 10 escape this AA if they fly too close to it, that's all I'm gonna say about it, so... That's a really nice thing for Jinan. It really definitely helps it because, like I said, it's very squishy. And we're going to see some um, some pretty risky maneuvering. As you can see, there's some big ships shooting at us. And just a couple hits from a minnow. One stray shell from a thunderer. And damn, we're already, already down to half HP, guys. It is definitely a thin line you have to thread when you're playing this. So, my typical approach and my tip for any new Jinan players, because it is out, guys. Thank freaking god it's out. My thought process of when I go into a game is, if I am playing with DDs, if I have DDs on my team, I'm going to do my best to stay with the DDs and push. And try to take out the enemy destroyers as, you know, as much as we can before they just run away and, you know, go undetected. But you do not want to expose yourself too much. Let's say you're playing Epicenter, and the DDs are going for the center cap. No, 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 you're not going in there. What you'll do instead is you'll flank to the right or the left, wherever you have, you know, the best opportunities for island coverage and actual firing positions. And then you shoot the DDs from the crossfire, from the flank. Because then they have to make a choice. Do they dodge the torpedoes, or do they dodge the Jinan salvos? Remember, your torpedoes can hit those DDs, so there's no reason to use them on use it on them. So, getting used to Jinan, Jinan's guns is crucial. And look at this Puerto Rico man, this poor guy. This is amazing, and this is why I preach: use your torpedoes, boys. This is the only time I'll use a, my guns versus a Puerto Rico. He's alone. He's just been massively hit by torpedoes. He's getting struck all around him. There's people around me too. This is how I open up. You never want to open up unless there's other people to shoot at. I only shoot when I see, like, let's say this Ohio, for example. I will only shoot him, if he has clear sight of me, right? When I see his guns light up. That, that and I know I have around 20 seconds where I can shoot torpedoes, I can shoot my guns, do whatever I need to do in 20 seconds, and get the heck out of there. 
That's the mindset you gotta have. You gotta think like a rat, man. Jinan is like a rat. It, it really is. If you played Warzone, you know the term rat. You know, they're, they're cheeky troll players, pretty much. This is, this is kind of a troll ship because you sneak in and out and you just dumpster people with these torpedoes. I mean, look at these two BBs here. They are ultimately dead. I mean, they have a Holland with fast torpedoes. That's gonna pop their DCP. And then they have a Jinan. They know I'm here, but they can't see me. Look how close I am. It's only now I'm getting detected. And as soon as I get detected, I pop my smoke. Hope for the best. Hope they don't blind fire me or something because that's pretty easy, honestly. Guys, if you see a Jinan smoke up fully broadside, go for the blind fire. I mean, if uh, this Ohio had shot me and maybe hit a couple of good shells, I could have been pretty much dead. But now he's the one who's dead. 13 torpedo hits, 122k damage and counting, boys. This is a nutty ship. I mean, <laughs> I don't really need to say anything. The numbers speak for themselves. And I'm going to show you my stats in this ship after. I've racked up, I think, almost 260 battles by now. And my win rate is pretty good. And I do not think I'm going to have the best win rate. Because there's going to be people out there that are going to be even better at this ship than I am. And I do consider myself pretty good at this by now. We've actually done torpedo-only challenges on my stream, and we've won games easily just by doing torpedo-only. It's, it's actually hilarious how OP these torpedoes can be when it's in the right hands. Now let's talk about this. Is Jinan OP? Now, obviously I have a little bit of a bias here because I absolutely adore the ship, so let me just look from an objective point of view as, good, as well as I can, because, I mean, who can be really 100% objective, right? Nobody can. I think the saving grace for Jinan's balance factor, in my opinion, is the skill ceiling. Not any new player, or a, let's say you're a BB player, you, you, you want to grind this. If you just free XP all the way and expect to get high damage numbers at tier 10, you're not going to have fun. Playing this line fully is, I, yeah, I think, well, not, not completely fully, but at least understanding if you're not you know, used to light cruisers, at least understanding what you're getting into what your toolbox is, so to say, is very important. Now, ad adept players will have no problem getting into this thing and getting in the groove of it after a couple battles. I mean, it is fun. The guns, as you can see here, are very good once you're, you, you know, in a kiting position, and we don't even have prop mod, and we still dodge this guy's salvo somewhat. I mean, we did get hit. But, um, the guns, I do kind of, I know this is a very far stretch, guys, but I kind of feel like they are Colbert guns in some way. Yeah, Colbert has way more firepower and faster reload, I think. But th for some reason, it just reminds me of a Colbert. So, like, you have almost a Colbert, you know, gun gunship. Mini Colbert, I should say. And then you have a more than a Shimakaze, guys. It is a crazy, crazy boat. And here we go, 151k damage, three kills. You saw the, the, the clips, it's um, it's pretty devastating. Now the next clip is even higher damage, and I, <laughs> I can't wait to show you guys. So let's check the battle detail, detail. 27 torpedoes, 3 kills, and you know, 101,000 torpedo damage, guys. Remember, there was also flooding. I think my torpedo and flooding was 90% of my damage that game. But let's move on to the next one. So, this next game here, our team has two Columbos and they have two Venezias. All, along with that, we have a Brest, so uh, yeah. I mean, rest in peace to anyone playing those ships, they really need a buff. But we have two DDs, and um, I think we're gonna spawn with the Destroyer if I'm not too wrong. Yes, we are. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go with our DD and make sure that he isn't gonna get overwhelmed by something, because he might get outspotted. Um, it is a Shimmer, so, you know, it's probably unlikely, since they only have one DD, but there's two Venezias, guys, and a Smolensk. I cannot do much to a Venezia and a Smolensk in a gunfight, but if I stay undetected and make sure they actually focus him, yeah, this sounds mean, make sure they focus him first, then shoot all your torpedoes, 15 from the first side, turn your ship around with the fuel smoke, and shoot 10 more, that's 25 in total. If 10 of those torpedoes hit a Venezia, man, he is as good as dead. If five or six, I don't, I mean, this is guessing. It's just from experience. I've shot so many Smolensks with these torpedoes. Smolensks don't need many. 
And watch this Venezia here. Watch this Shimakazi doing his thing too. Venezia is quite fast, so I'm, I mean, he could be... I can't remember this, guys. This is the first time watching this. I've saved these gameplays just because of this. This is a long time ago. Like you saw, I, uh, I had the best player tag in one of them. But you're seeing here, I'm not opening up. I do not want this Venezia to see where I am. And he's actually going get, to get hit by some Shimakazi torpedoes. But what we do here is we turn our ship, slow down. We make sure this island is in between me and Venezia. He still cannot see us. We're very close to detection range. And now we see him turning away. So I decide not to shoot my torpedoes. That is the sensible option here. I mean, although you have many, you want to use them correctly. You don't want to spam them just randomly. I mean, getting them into choke points is good. But DDs that shoot torpedoes into choke points tend to go for other destroyers, random stray hits, and you can't do that. So we send our torpedoes away, cap Charlie, and then we rethink our strategy. Where do we want to go from next? We know there's something in that smoke, and it's most likely the Venezia. Now, I want to give you guys a tip on smokes. If you see a pesky Neptune, Minnow, Smolensk, look at this guy. I mean, come on. That's three hits, half his HP, so probably six. Let's say six hits on the Smolensk, and he's, he's as good as dead. When you see that smoke, man, they feel so, so safe. You just gotta send 15 torpedoes their way, and I mean, they're, they're gone. This Smolensk here decided to go broadside to me, and guys, fighting a Smolensk, yes, you will fight a one-on-one -on -one full HP gun duel versus his menacing AP. But if he's low, and you have more HP than him, remember you have fuel smokes. This guy don't, doesn't stand a chance, and he gets lit up. The Preussen pushes in, I don't know what he's doing, he's hitting the rock and the damage is just racking up. This is just how it is to play Jinan, boys. And girls, I know you're out there. <laughs> this is just amazing, man, and I, I really want people who have had trouble with this ship to play this ship as we blind fire the living crap out of that Smolensk. Bye bye, guy. Bye bye, there's a new light cruiser in town and we have more than just Daka Daka, we actually have Ping Chilling. Bye bye, Preussen. So what I do here is, you see I'm using my fuel smoke to avoid his secondaries, and now I'm actually almost at, you know, at his bow. So his secondaries won't be as effective, his rear turrets won't be firing. And, I mean, I can pretty much just get away here using my rear guns, and look at those torpedoes. That was just three. He's got a flood, he's got a fire, and this, I mean, this guy's dead. The the Shimmer is probably going to go in for the, for the finish here. Ultimately, he probably doesn't need it, but... Here we go, and let's see, can this person actually get the Shimmer? Oh, he, nah, he won't. But that's how you pretty much take out a whole flank. Now we have Charlie to ourselves. Just me and this Shimmer did it. Me and this Shimmer. If you play it like a DD, you will have immense power, because you have the power of a cruiser in your guns. You have the power of, your, of a cruiser in your AA. And you have the power of a DD in your torpedoes. So... If I'm going to give this a rating, you probably already know what I'm going to give it, guys. <laughs> to anyone wondering what I'm going to give this, it's going to be a 10 out of 10. Bang out in the water. There's not many ships I give 10 out of 10. The others I give 10 out of 10 are Worcester and Colbert. Simply because that's my personal bias there. I definitely think this one is a 10 out of 10 like Minotaur is for me. Objectively, I think Minotaur and Jinan are the two hardest cruisers to play in this game. But, when mastered and played correctly, they are the two most powerful cruisers in this game. No doubt about it. Minotaur can also do this, but Minotaur has to risk a lot more. See, it has normal smokes, which is great for sitting and spamming DDs with your AP or cruisers, blah blah blah, you know how Minotaur is. But to use all the torpedoes at their full potential, you have to get extremely close. That's where Jinan shines, it has a fuel smoke. So you just, you know, ramming speed towards a BB. You just keep your bow straight pointed towards them, and you use your fuel smoke, send one torpedo and the next torpedo from either side, boom boom, then you run away. Go to a place, maneuver your ship around their guns while you're in your fuel smoke. It's a very, very powerful and dick move. You can just get ar around their guns. That They can't turn fast enough. They don't know where you're going in the fuel smoke. They can't see you. So that's how I've gotten a lot of success in this ship, is simply by using a lot of clever maneuver maneuvering, staying behind islands, knowing when to shoot, when not to shoot. And that's why I say this is one of the only and one of the few surface ships in this game that could turn a game around. It just has that little bit more, you know, little, little, little more tools in the toolbox, as I said, 
than something like a Shimmer that also has a ton of torpedoes. They just aren't quite effective enough, hence the reload, and that's all it has. As we see this Shimmer, you know, blissfully push in to take capture point B and then realize, oh no, <laughs> there's a Jinan on my flank. And you can see here that the AP is not bad on a DD. I mean, we're doing considerable damage, some overpens here and there, but who cares? It's, it's, it's still decent damage. It's output all the time. And our final, final guy here, Le Tonnerre. I've, I've played against you quite a bit of times, my friend, but um, yeah, Republic doesn't stand a chance versus these torpedoes, even with the speed, because you have so many, you can just, you know, send more. But yeah, we do actually go down here, and it's twice in this video I've been blapped by Republic. I mean, it is a powerful ship, and this is just a perfect example of why you do not... I say do not go broadside unless you know you have the win or your team can pull it off or it's worth it. You you can sacrifice yourself, but it better be worth it. You better crank up some 60k damage in your, you know, instant damage. 60k is something you could do instantly in this ship. But actually, Le Tonnerre survived and GG to him, man. GG well played. You got me, buddy. I, uh, I applaud you. That was, I mean, I deserved it. I deserved it. I went broadside to a Republic. Well, you know, you, you guess what happens. But I'll take it, 156k ain't too bad either, man. That is not bad. So, let's check the stats here. And, um, you know, 156k, nothing nothing usual here. But the Shima did actually pretty good, 106k. Good job by him, he did pretty good. We had a good run there on Charlie. But as you can see, again, the torpedoes are the main threat. Oh well, my friends, it has to come to an end at some point, but my Jinan career is not ending, and I hope yours is not to get this ship. It's fun. It's super, you know, high skill ceiling, so there's a lot to learn, and that's great. It's it's a good ship to learn this game on. It's a punishing ship. And also, I wanted to say thank you so much, guys, for 700 subscribers. It's actually incredible how much growth we've had lately, and I just want to thank you all. I hope you enjoyed the video. My name has been Bablin, and I am signing out.